Ooh, Halloween episode. Crooked cameras. Crooked cameras. Alright. I got a list this time. A list of topics? A list of topics. Nice. Wait, I, can we can we do an introduction? Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna start us off. Hey everyone out there. Thanks again for tuning in to the Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing podcast. Yay! That uh Phil? Take it away. Yep. Hear nothing. See nothing. And say nothing. You weren't supposed to say something. Anyways. <laughs> you you no. blew it, John. <laughs> blew it. Let's, right. let's do it again. Fuck this shit. But, oh, it's too late. No, but, um, yeah. Er, so, so, it's okay that I smoke, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I encourage it. Because we didn't, you know, you know, last episode we realized that uh, the there was a large gas cloud in the room. John, John didn't like it too much, but it lets us know when we, when all of us, not just me, because I don't know when to shut f- the, the fuck up ever. But uh, so I mean, what the? So you don't smoke, John? No, I, I don't smoke. When, when did you stop smoking? Years ago. Like, like, what? Two, like, what? Twenty five? Like, uh, you weren't smoking at five f- years old. Fifteen. 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Yeah. Okay. And what about you, Bill? When did you start? Oh, shit. When I was 16 years old. 16? Yeah, so 10 years. Was it, was it, uh, because I know you smoke like, um, what is it, three a day? Three packs? <laughs> no, had <laughs> no round down. It's about one. Oh, okay. No, I didn't know. I don't even, but. Oh, really? You thought I smoked three packs a day? I, I, yeah, I wouldn't know. I mean, I don't know what's, I don't, I have a c- cigar once in a while, or, you know, we go hookah, but I wouldn't know if, uh, that's like normal for people to have, you know, one pack a day, three packs a day. Well, I, I assume that people who have like that fuck hole in their throat, it's like, uh, I don't know, 10 packs a day. Uh, like in a re- like realistically, I thought it, that's what it was. I don't even know. I okay. couldn't tell you. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I started smoking a cigar because um, my mom had a really cocksucker boyfriend, Tom, and he um, we He's, used to get into fist fights. This guy was great. Yeah, yeah, he, he would, sounds nice. Yeah, and uh, it's, it kind of sounds weird. I guess it's like reverse psychology, but yeah, he was a cocksucker. He um. He would bitch about random things, and we'd actually... I actually... He was, a, like, half a foot to a foot taller than me, so I actually had to throw a chair at him because I couldn't reach far enough to punch him in the nose. And, yeah, he'd be like... Like, we'd, I'd be walking by... Or he'd be walking by, and I'm putting my shirt on, and he's like, yeah, you need to... You need to put that... Oh, yeah, he had a lisp and a really rest. He's like, you need to start putting that shirt on like, like you're a man. Stop putting that shirt on like you're a faggot. I'm like... Oh. Okay, can you come here and teach me to be more heterosexual? Because I didn't know the guy walking by, spying on me, taking my clothes off, is is not the faggot. So I don't want to put my shirt on like a faggot anymore, you know. And so that's the kind of guy he was. And and he smoked a shitload of cigars. I don't know if it's just uh, subconscious psychology, but I fucking hated it. I used to think I hated it because of him, but I hated the smell. And then suddenly, I went to a hookah bar, and my buddy's like, well, I don't really, you know, hookah kind of fucks up your throat after a long time. Why don't you try a cigar? And I tried it, and it was delicious. And I have an announcement. I I recently, first time dedicated diet, as fat ass as that sounds, I'm like trying to eat under 900 calories and run off 1,000. I I might die. And I, and what's funny is I used to have cigars because they were really sugary as uh, my dessert. <laughs> and there actually is a cigar diet. So I'm glad I'm not like the only psychopath doing that. So that's what I'm doing. But uh, yeah. Oh, and then, and then I guess it's probably obvious for most people, but I really love mafia movies. So... The cigars got me more into it. it. Made me try them more and made me love it more. And it really takes off stress. And speaking of mafia movies, one thing I wanted to say: Did I ever tell you guys about my buddy Vito? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. So 
here's the funny thing. I think it was actually before I met you, John. Or no, no, no. It was after. But me and... That's crazy. Me and John know each other for, like, what? 24 years? Yeah, something... 25 years. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. I can't believe... I can't believe... We we haven't ripped each other's heads off. Or, or at least, like... Well, we, came, we came close uh, a few times. Yeah. So, Vito... So Vito, oh, so Vito was my uh, first friend ever because, like, right now, I, w- I, w- I wouldn't shut the fuck up. No, no, luckily, I at the time, I couldn't speak English. So so I was going to a Catholic school. I was in, in like, second grade. I couldn't, or no, I was third grade. I couldn't fucking speak English. So I'm just, like, the crazy Polak kid who nobody wants to talk to because he just does weird shit and he can't speak English, so... You can't tell him not to do shit. And then Vito was like this crazy fucking. His name was Vito Siciliano. I don't. I don't give a fuck if he sees this. So he's obviously Sicilian. And there was really uh, nobody talked to him because he just had really fucked up parents. Um, they actually. I never knew what happened to his parents, but uh, his ma would always try and borrow thousands of dollars weekly from my ma. So I don't know if they owed like a loan shark or some shit, but. Um, she and I think she might have been a heroin addict. That's what my ma told me all these years. And then later on, her ma, his ma died, and we don't know. I think the dad went to jail. And we we never knew what the fuck happened. So the funny thing is, I was hanging out with this, you know. Oh, so here's this crazy Polak kid. Here's this crazy Italian kid. They're best friends because they're both both weird, and everybody hates them. So of course everybody stalks everybody when they get older. Like, oh, what's this guy up to? What's this guy? You know. So I looked up his name, and he, you know, I'm like, oh, man, he's probably got some jobs for me to do. You know, I, I need to fill out some applications. He's probably doing some really badass mafia shit. Well, he's doing something even more badass. Do tell. Mafia. He got arrested two years ago because he was in a guys-only masturbation cult in River Forest Woods. How badass is that? Yeah. It's like something right out of The Godfather. I'm telling you, man. Hey. So, so I I thought that was pretty awesome. That uh, I don't know. I, I guess that's what happens when your ma's a crack whore and your dad's in the mafia. You end up masturbating in the woods. Sounds like some real jerks. But yeah. <laughs> so, what I'm getting the impression of is that you've had a few very strong male role models in your life. Oh yeah. Between Tom and Vito. Oh yes. The one comment I wanted to say is well, there, there's John too. That, and of course, John. <laughs> oh shit. And uh, he's looking at you like, "What about me, man?" <laughs> no, I didn't forget about you, John. But instead of throwing Thanks, chairs at, you're welcome. Instead of throwing chairs at Tom, you could have just stood on the chair and then decked him. I I didn't. Th- well, I mean, I guess that would have worked. But he, I yeah. Uh, I don't, know. I don't know why I didn't think about that. I'm, I'm just coming up with an excuse right now. Sure, sure. That's fine. So anyway, in case you didn't get it out there, today's episode is brought to you by tobacco. That's right. Everyone's favorite plant, everyone's favorite smokable herb. And uh, Phil and I and John at one point are all big fans. So here's to tobacco. And tobacco the band. Thomas it, Feck. Exactly right. Blackmouth Superhero. So yeah, I um. So uh, y- have you guys ever seen um, another thing that happened this week? Have you guys ever seen a racer head? <sighs> no, I don't think so. I've seen parts of it. That's David Lynch, right? Yeah, David Lynch. It's his first movie. Well, first I I guess like big movie. Well, that's that that's like from the fifties or sixties. It's black and white. Yeah, uh, yeah, I saw the cover of it. Yeah, the it's Andy. On the right, yeah, yeah. With the huge... saw it at the library, but yeah, it does look like Andy. So I guess I'll tell you guys, but um, the main guy, I was fucking surprised. I didn't know it was um, I thought it was like taped in the eighties to look like it's like really old. It's actually taped in the seventies, and long story short, it's about this guy. It's a David Lynch movie, so there's a whole lot of wind blowing in the background, a whole lot of uh, awkward conversation, kind of like. When we have nothing to talk about, we have a David. This is a David Lynch movie right now, but um, uh, and then he has uh, the wife has like a miscarriage, 
and he goes to pick it up from the hospital in a paper bag and it cries all night and the baby keeps crying and he keeps like he's so fed up with shit I mean you know David Lynch you got that whole fucking hipster thing of it's you know based on interpretation or whatever sure so he keeps seeing this woman behind a furnace with really cancerous cheeks singing uh, 1920s jazz or like swing and um I'm guessing it's supposed to represent that, like, you lose your fucking mind when you have a baby. Because the wife leaves him, and he's got to deal with the crying. And near the end of the movie, I think he kind of, like, stabs the baby to death. And then it just kind of ends. And the best part is, uh, the reason why I'm announcing this is, uh, I'm a great parent. Because I couldn't get Gavin to get scared of anything, my, my kid. And that night, I actually started seeing that girl in the furnace because he was fucking crying for an hour and a half after seeing that movie. So, yeah. But, but, but you know what was really weird is before we watched it, on the way home, I'm like, oh, we should watch something scary. And I've never seen Eraserhead. Everybody keeps recommending it. Dude, you know what was really weird? Like, the last thing I thought of after seeing the movie... Because I saw this during the day, but I was like, ah, whatever, she's just an idiot. I swear to God. I was in traffic, block away from my house, thinking about watching the movie. And there was this lady. She didn't look like a crackhead or some lady from a lower class neighborhood. She had a really nice mini SUV, brand new Honda. She had a baby in the back. Well, she had, I saw three balloons. You know when you're just chilling in traffic and you look at your rear view, like, oh, what's that person doing? Are they singing like crazy? Are they screaming? And I look, and she's, like, just kind of, like, making cute faces, talking to the balloons. I'm like, oh, what is that? And she looks back. Apparently, she could afford this mini SUV with a baby, but she couldn't afford a baby chair. So the baby was just on the floor, and she was, like, trying to cheer it up. And then she grabs it by its foot, this two-year-old, and carries it to the front and lays it down on the passenger seat. And then, and then I'm like, oh, that's why she's driving like an idiot three cars away from everybody. Because if the airbag goes off, the ba- baby's going to, like, missile through the fucking window. And then I see this movie about babies crying and not taking care of kids the right way. Makes you think. Makes you think. So, scale from one to ten, a razor head. How would you rate it? Uh, seven or eight. Okay. Okay. I want to know what kind of person is recommending that sort of movie to you who's watching that and thinks, oh my God, Phil would love this. What kind of person would recommend it? Uh, well, I saw Lost Highway, and I really love that, and everybody says that that's David Lynch's worst movie. Okay. So I was like, okay, so what's his best thing like? Because I really like Lost, and then I, yeah, I, I would say Racerhead's a lot better. Interesting. Okay. Have you ever seen Mulholland Drive? I have. Uh, yeah, that was. I would rate that like six. Okay. It's kind of on the fence. Twin Peaks, I thought was fucking horrible. The television series. Yeah. Interesting. It was just. I mean, I couldn't go, sit through one episode. It, it just seemed like a really shitty, uh, like '90s soap opera, like something with George Clooney be in. Fair enough. How many seasons of that? Of Twin Peaks, it's a TV show, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many are? I don't know. Like nine, I think. Well, it's still going on now, or did they just re-release it on Netflix? They, it, it started off in like 1985, right? I don't know. It just got re or renewed. I don't think there are nine seasons. That seems. I was thinking more of like four, maybe tops. Like, I thought there were only two seasons, and they renewed it for a third. But mm-hmm. again, I don't know. <laughs> Anyone want to pull out their phone? Pull out their phone. We could get to the bottom of this. How many seasons? Yeah. Sure. Why not? What's the most uh, season show you watched? Oh, God. Uh, me personally, and I'm going to count them all together, but I watched uh, Buffy and Angel. Yeah. And so there are five seasons of Buffy, and I think five or seven seasons of Angel. So... And I watched them simultaneously. So I watched the first three seasons of Buffy, and then I started on season four of Buffy, 
and season one of Angel and alternated, you know, episode of Buffy, episode of Angel, episode of Buffy, episode of Angel. So that, that, uh, I haven't seen a single episode of that either, either one of those shows. You are Wait, missing out. So I guess so. I'll so have there's to check three it out. seasons in Twin Peaks. Yeah. That's nothing. No. I don't know why people are like suddenly re obsessed about it. Because it's David Lynch, man. Plus David Duchovny. And I also sat through many, many seasons of The X Files. What about The Office? Never watched it. Oh. I just am about to finish Sopranos, and it's on season. Wait, I'm sorry. Did you say five? The Office or Sopranos? The Sopranos. Okay. And then. You said The Office, though. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> I've, well, for what it's worth, I've never watched any of The Sopranos either. Yeah. I, I'm surprised you uh, haven't seen all of it already. What? So- Sopranos. I already, I watched it a while back. Oh, I'm rewatching, rewatching it now. And then uh, <sighs> the longest seasons I ever watched. Sorry, I'm super fucking white, but Frasier, it's like 12 seasons. Is it the- God. See, people always credit that show for being really, really smart comedy, and it's not. It's really dumb comedy, but they use big words, and that's what makes it even funnier. Same thing with Big Bang Theory. That's not smart humor. It's very, very cheap humor, but they use big words and nerdy themes yeah. to make it, you know, think, oh my God, it's such more, smart humor. I think it's more wit, like uh, like Monty Python. Mm. I, I would say Frasier's almost like English comedy, no? Well, there's no slapstick, but... Well, actually, there is. People get... But, mm. I don't know. I'm try- Monty Python was super abstract. Like, it would just be this continuous thing going from situation A, transitioning into situation B, transitioning into situation C. Whereas I feel like Frasier is very logical, very methodical. Yes, like, those blues and scrambled eggs. Exactly right. You know, just one situation. And it, it was a classic sitcom, whereas Monty Python was way... Um, the Flying Circus was way different than that. Yeah. But even that has so many episodes, of which I think myself included, the majority of people have only seen like four or five of the good ones. <laughs> of, of Yeah. You have know? you ever seen it, John? Frasier or Monty Python? Either. Uh, I saw Monty Python. Frasier, I've seen a couple episodes. Okay. Maybe a season worth. I used to always think you were Niles growing up. Aw. I don't know. <laughs> no. Can I be Bulldog? Can you be my Niles? That's what I'm trying to like. I'm, so, so you're Frasier? Mm. I'd like to be Daphne, the one you have a crush on. Aw. No. All right. No, but uh, yeah. So, that's 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 all the. Yeah. So speaking. Of, anyways, Twin Peaks. I couldn't. I couldn't sit through it. But yeah. Fair enough. I know a lot of people that really love that show. But, uh, oh, yeah. So I guess there's uh, another funny thing I got to mention. Do? Which I guarantee, I don't think I mentioned this. Did you guys. Oh, speaking, I guess this whole fucking episode is going to be smoking themed. But, um, <laughs> did I tell you guys about vaping for kids? No. Did I? Uh, you mentioned it to me. I think that was, uh, last weekend, though. I don't it, think it, it was, was during yeah, the bus. Bo- yeah, yeah. It wasn't during this. So we recently moved and um moved into this house and you know the the kids still trying to like Gavin he's still uh mingling to get into the neighborhood to to just try and get people's phone numbers get new friends. He's just not and and no matter where you are no matter how social you are you're not you're not going to immediately fit in or bond or connect with those around you. Especially at that age it's a lot hard I you know so he, uh, you know, I ask him every day, how'd your day go and everything? And he's like, oh, well, I almost vaped. Yeah, Cause we went for a walk and there's a store by us, a vape, a vape store. It's got vape in the name. It's like, oh, I know what that is. I'm like, oh, you're doing that already? This is a joke. And he's like, well, I, I didn't do it. I thought it was bad. I'm like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about? So I guess... I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, I, who, who, where, the, where the hell did you vape from? Was, it, was there some, like, you know, kid who just skips school and s- sells it in the parking lot? He's like, no, no, one of my friends in, in, in my class has it. I'm like, okay, so he's in your class. Did he flunk a shitload and he's, like, 16? He's like, no, no, he's my grade. He's my age. 
I go, why does he have a vape? And I went online, did some research. They have vape now for kids that's vitamins. Hmm. B12, vitamin C, and which is completely fucking ridiculous. Because when I picture this situation, I just picture this kid smoking vitamin. Just I just picture this kid in a leather jacket like, yeah, you, you kids do your homework. Not me. <sighs> you know? <laughs> and like... Like, what the fuck? How is that? You know, I, I just watched Super Size Me recently, too. And and showing how, like, they market to kids with all these play places and shit for, sure. uh, for McDonald's. It's like, how is that not a fucked up thing for kids? To be like, oh, start early. Vape that vitamin C. Oh, you're deficient and, you know, oh, you're a fucking diabetic. You need some diabetic medicine to vape, you know? Like, I don't know. I, I think it's just kind of crazy that there was a crazy fact that I found out that I don't know I'm not surprised not surprised it's pretty Got cool nothing. it's pretty cool I mean would you be the vaping 10 year old the uh, man if they had that technology at the time hell yes <laughs> but yeah fuck those Flintstones vitamins yeah right those Flintstones <laughs> yeah well you know what we did John with uh, the the when cough syrup was cool that was fucking great we weren't 10 years old man <laughs> <laughs> Like 10 and a half, well, 11. That, that, that's what it does to you. It makes you think that you did it at 10 years old. I don't fucking remember when I did it. What? How long? When was that? I think that was like 16, 17. 16, 17? Really? It was definitely high school. Well, it was definitely... I know it was definitely before we could get alcohol. Because <laughs> we were trying to get <laughs> fucked up on something. Not be Lil Wayne. Just listening to sipping on some scissor and be Word. 36 Mafia thug. Because, cause no, actually, that reminds me. Recently, I started playing Silent Hill, and the reason, the thing that pissed me off the most. Okay, I was telling John earlier and Bill that I couldn't play Silent Hill because it's just too hard, and I couldn't find the flashlight in the fucking game. So, pretty much the whole game is black if you play it without the flashlight. So. The one thing that I realized, though, that I did like, that that brings me back. Don't you laugh, you bastard! My, I need my flashlight. All right. No, but was, dude. I remember this. I don't know if you. Re- this is. I'm just okay. I'm gonna tell you how I remember it, and you know I got shitty fucking memory. But I remember. I think your dad went on vacation or something, so we had the apartment to ourselves, and then I think your sister went on a sleepover. And, it, and we were snowed in, and then I had fucking cough syrup, and then we played Silent Hill all the way through without sleeping, and that was the scariest shit I ever fucking experienced. It was a great experience, and now when I play it, I'm like, I don't want to have to fucking drink cough syrup to <laughs> to to have that terror again. You know <laughs> why? Why do these motherfuckers come up with games that aren't scary? You know? Do you remember that, John? I remember playing a lot of Silent Hill, but I don't recall that day. Uh, side effect of the cough syrup, I presume. Yeah, must be. Well, I do remember when... Do you remember Triple C's? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, because I, I remember somebody told us to take eight when you're supposed to take like two. So I think... Didn't you take 16? No, I think I took eight. Okay. Because I thought, I, I think, I, I'm pretty sure I took like 16 or 32. And, yeah, so that explains a lot. And Not then being played able to some find Silent fucking, Hill? Well, and, and that's when I couldn't find a flashlight, and I was like, John, you play this shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, man, you got to get some allergy meds then. Some allergy meds? Yeah, is that the triple C is like the Benadryl and shit that you just pop tons of it? I, I don't know. I never... I, I, I just thought about that recently because I was going to pick up some meds and they actually have triple C's behind the counter now. Hmm. It's cough and cold. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I know I had a lot of friends that would abuse like allergy pills like Benadryl and shit and you take enough of that and then you trip and then vomit a lot. I've never heard of that one. Well, you're missing out. It's never too late, John. Have I you know- guys ever heard of mud drink? No. Yeah, is that the, like the like Novocaine stuff where you drink it and it numbs you? Like, I I don't like Novocaine. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's Novocaine. I know it's kind of like cough syrupy, 
but it, but you have to get it prescribed. And I guess gangsters these days. I'm too white to know this. I was gonna ask my my black friend about this, but he didn't. He he was just laughing at me. Like, what's mud drink? And I I guess I read online. It's kind of like uh, a lot of rappers. They mix this like really dark cough syrupy numbing drink with Sprite and it just really fucks you up. I guess that's what's kind of making Lil Wayne have seizures and shit. So, yeah. I don't know. It's actually, it's funny because we're having a Halloween. We're having, a, like we were talking before, we're having a really goofy Halloween thing at my job and I didn't know what to go as. So I'm like, I'll go as Chucky because I have a Chucky mask. I never went as it because I think I found it in somebody's car. But... I was like, uh, you know, I couldn't find overalls anywhere. I go to a store. She's like, oh, they're trendy this year. I'm like, trendy? What? What's trendy in overalls? You know, uh, I couldn't even think of anything. Like, what, oh, brother, where art thou? Like, why would... And it's, I guess, she said, well, a lot of people are dressing up as scarecrows. Which, I don't know what, but it was really random. Uh, and it really <laughs> aggravating for me because... Anyways... Before I strangled her, I left, and I'm like, all right. So my cousin, uh, when she was f- four and I was like 12, I used to chase her with a My Buddy doll. Because uh, I had a, like a, you know what that is? Mm-mm. It's a Chucky lookalike doll. Yeah. It was a ripoff of uh, Best Friends doll. So when they made Chucky... You know, they said like, "Oh, it's a do- it's a best friends doll or whatever." Mm-hmm. My buddy was the realistic, not movie version of the good guy doll. Okay, gotcha. But it's not supposed to be scary. It's supposed to be like your buddy. A person you go to the bathroom with and sleep with and shit. Yeah. So I had one, and I just, of course, because it's me, I you know drew up blood, and I, I think I set off like a firecracker in his eyeball to make him look like Chucky. And sure. I would chase my cousin with it. So it's the cutest thing ever. She's like six. And they go Christmas shopping. And you know those really cheesy ghetto um, t-shirts that have gems on them and designs and shit? She's like, oh, mom, look. Philip would like that. And there was a it was a large face of Chucky. And it says Ice Killer in uh, like gemstones. Okay. So I'm like, fuck, I'll be like Chucky from the hood for the work party. It's coming up Tuesday, and I still don't know if I should do it. And then I came to the dilemma, the horrible fucking dilemma of what do I wear for shoes? Because I have Timberlands, but they're like work with Timberlands. And then should I wear, or, sh- or should I wear Nikes? And I asked my black friend again. He goes, well, do you want to be fuck boy, or do you want to be New York gangster? Do any, do either of you know what that is? Nope. No? No. So I guess fuckboy is a uh, modern uh, gangsta, which is like Nikes. Uh, I, guess, I guess it's just pretty much black guys with dreads who have really skinny jeans and torn up. They pretty much look like hipsters who use Uzis. You know, it, it, that, 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 that's, how, that's actually how the gangs in, uh, in Chicago look like now. Like uh, Chief Keef, you know? So... I'm like, oh, oh, so this is a uh, fuckboy. I did not know that in my white world. So what is New York gangster? He's like, oh, well, that's like Method Man, where you wear everything baggy and saggy, and you wear boots. And I'm like, okay, so so what is the opposite of a fuckboy? So that I avoid being that. And he, that's when he started laughing and walked away. But, yeah. Just, just if you ever, if you guys ever want to be a fuckboy, you know. Duly noted. I, uh, I don't know, man. I don't think I'd want to be Chucky from the Hood for Halloween. No, that's I because it's at a workplace or just in general. Just in general, I don't think you need to bring like socioeconomic class into your Halloween costume. But that's Chucky. For, well, I well they had a gangsta costume at a Spirit Halloween where you just buy a shitload of bling. That's what I got. That see that strikes me as super distasteful. Like, I don't know. Just, just be a ghost, Phil. So wear a white white bedsheet. 
I did it's, that last year. I was I took a white bed a white bed sheet, mm-hmm. put it over my head, cut two eye holes in. I walked to a party in um uh, in the city, and guess what's the first thing they said? You're a Klansman. I'm a Klansman, yeah. And there was like a bunch of black people there too. <laughs> so you, this year you gotta add the tiki torch. <laughs> yeah, that that'll work. So I don't know. Do you think the situation would have been any better if you went dressed up like a fuckboy or a New York gangster? <laughs> uh, probably a little better, yeah. Well, what you're it would distasteful like what you think it's offensive? L- mildly. Who would it? I mean, that was recommended by my friend. Mm. Was, I'm not saying he represents people from the hood, but sure. I, I think you're fine. I think you should do it. He's like, as long as it's stupid, do it. So, fair I, enough. I mean, I don't know if we should. Yeah, I'm. I'm almost out of stories. Oh, the other thing, I don't. Oh, fuck. We'll listen to him on the way back. Announcement. Have you Have you guys ever? Oh, I. I. I think I told you, John, at uh, Bill's party, um, when you were passed out in the monkey suit. No, but um. That have you ever heard of Ghost Maine, Bill? No. So, Ghost Maine, this is fucking great. I'm not really... I, I guess I don't like him as much now. I went nuts for him for about a week. But Ghost Maine is... He is a... Uh, sounds like Gucci Mane. Like, the music, the music, the beats, sounds like Gucci Mane. Sounds like fucking... I don't even know what to... It, they call it Chicago Trip or something. It just really deep bass. I guess like Lil Pump, you know? But the, you know Lil Pump is the bitch is hating on me because I'm ignorant. Because I'm Mm -mm. that What I was playing on the way to Riot Fest. uh, Gotcha. (laughs) D-Rose. Anyways, the guy who has one word per song. Mm -hmm. A drumstick thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so that's how the music is for this. But this guy has really great lyrics about satanic rituals and and he's completely black metal and all his fucking albums are like black metal logos and shit it's fucking beautiful i can't believe it and he's yeah he's like a huge fan of bathory and and demu borger and i don't know i think it's great so the great thing about it is is i get into these things i obsess over one thing and i download all their shit and i get into it and then of course i'm like so when did they come to town well guess what He's coming to town next month. One of one of three that are all ages shows at Reggie's. So I got a show to take Gavin to. And I got. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of sad that it's a rap show. May, it may be something more epic because he really likes Electric Light Orchestra right now. But I'm not paying seven hundred dollars to see somebody almost half die on stage. Like, are they coming to town? I don't know. Ga- Gavin said they might be, but. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not paying that much money, and, and, and then to have binoculars for a show like that, I'd rather well, have. Where a are they playing? At Reggie's. That, oh, that electric. Rapper. Wait, ELO? Oh, no, I mean, I'm guessing like United Center, or obviously it wouldn't be outdoors now that it's cold as shit. Right. I kind of want to see Macabre at Reggie's on the 26th, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that'd be cool. Do you know what Macabre is about, Bill? I can guess by the name. Spooky stuff. Spooky stuff. Yeah. Christmas stuff. It's twenty sixth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they like uh they're really obsessed with all serial killers. Okay. And all of their songs are they've been together for twenty five years. I think I got into them in like high school, right? Yeah, sounds right. And yeah, and they just like all this shit is uh they're very accurate about their histor- historical things. Like, they just had an album called Dahmer, and it was literally just a biography of Dahmer. And what they what they do is, that makes it super catchy death metal, is they take, like, uh, kids' jingle jangle sing-along, and they convert it into death metal, but then the lyrics are about the killer. And they cover every fucking killer. Wait, can you give me, like, a... Like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but now it's about Albert Fish. Yeah, or or Vampire of Dusseldorf, or Jack the Ripper, or Charles Manson, or who else is there? Night Stalker, uh, Mary Ed Bell. Gein. Yeah, Ed Gein. 
the Black Dahlia murderer. And I think they. Oh, I am the Unabomber. <laughs> I guess. I guess he's a serial killer. I mean. I mean, technically, yeah. Is that an all ages show? Can you bring it under the head? I, I don't think so. No, because I actually I I filtered it by all ages just to take him to a show, and the, yeah, Ghost Man was like the only one. the the other ones was just like it wasn't it wasn't good. It was just like oh a cover of I don't know David Bowie band or something. I I, I don't know. Take me to that Japanese band that you went there once. Oh, for. Key Lander Z. Yeah, I, that's not all ages. It's at Emporium. Did they already play, or is that... It's it's still coming. It's uh, November 11th, I think. Okay. And it's at Emporium. Sure. Pretty sure it's not sold out, because they're advertising the fuck out of it online. Yeah. Do you have to get tickets, or is it like just yeah. cover at the door? Or? Uh, you could do. You could get it at the door. I got them online, because... Well, did you hear what happened with them? Mm-mm. So, for those of you who don't... Uh, for those of you who don't know who Peel Energy is, they're a Power Rangers band... Japanese punk band sound absolutely great. They sound exactly what you would imagine a Japanese punk Power Rangers band to sound like. The thing that's great is they have awesome costumes. They look exactly like the scenes where the Power Rangers Transformer is fighting, and they their their live show is fucking spectacular. You've seen them, right, Bill? No. Oh, you have. Oh, Mm-mm. you and oh. Adela went that one time, but not me. Spectac- we took Ross, Dino Bosco, and and he fucking hated it because they'll they'll like the well the whole time uh yeah maybe he shouldn't get in the, the whole time he he had an itch that one of my brother's friends was in the closet gay and so he could he just had anxiety all night because he thought that he's gonna get his ass grabbed or something. So the whole night he was just super pissed off because he thought the gay guy was hitting on him when he'd be like outside or something. It's, it was pretty hilarious. Sounds pretty funny. But uh, during the show, they they would like a uh, play. Um, they'll, they'll they'll have like a uh, solo where they prolong it and they'll fucking take they'll take a guy in the from backstage dressed up as a bowling pin and then th- the two band members mosh and throw themselves into the bowling pin and then they actually take bowling pins out and have the crowd. Uh, throw people into the bowling pins. And then they had like a... There's a guitar monster. He's like a flying V octopus that uh, always crowd surfs. They usually always, like in the middle of their set, take their instruments and just play in the crowd. It's a really engaging show. And it's simple like Ramon's, you know, punk. It's Japanese Power Rangers punk. And uh, so what happened with them... They, because it's so fucking goofy, and the singer, he's like almost 60. Like, he's like our parents' age. And he's doing this shit. He dyes his hair every, he has, he dyes his hair every day yellow. He's knocked out teeth because of these punk shows. And he, like, uh, a lot of the members, they were like, yo, I'm sick of this shit. Like, this is real childish. Like, I need to focus on, because their backgrounds are super, like, what you would think of as like the, you know, average uh, Japanese person to grow up, just a uh, peaceful family. You know, you get a job, you come back home for dinner, just uh, every average any family, you know. And they're just, uh, I just, I just feel like Japanese is more peaceful, more like uh, spiritual because Americans just fucking families hate each other. But, anyways. Um, so he, like, it was just depressing. They made a documentary called Mad Tiger. It was on Netflix. And they made it about, like, the Pilander Yellow, the singers, like, kind of, like, de- fall into depression because uh, his best friend, Pilander Red, the guitar player, was leaving. Oh. And it's actually really depressing because he hadn't been to, like, Japan in all these years because his family kind of, like denounced him like oh you're this fucking whack job you're, you're completely bald but you're still spiking your hair and dyeing it yellow every week <laughs> so 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 he like has to go back but and then like he'll walk in the streets with his family and all these like little kids will walk to ah pina de yellow you know like so he's kind of like a shame to the family so he's like oh i'm just gonna chill here and be kind of you know find out who i am and find out why i was such a tyrant in the band 
And that was like, that was supposed to be the end of the band. So now that they're coming, that's why I bought my tickets online. Yeah. So yeah. And I think they were, oh, they were on the, I don't know what it is, but it sounds really familiar. They're on the Gong Show. Okay. So are we, so are we changing the subject? To that hell yeah. What's the subject? All right, Big Billy B. That's right. Now it's all about me, and I want to talk to you guys about my vacation. Yeah. Oh yeah, you were gone for a while. Fuck yes, I was. I um took like a week and a half off work, and I went to Austin, Texas, and I yeah. was there for a few days, and then we road tripped to New Orleans, then we came back to Austin, Texas, and then I flew back to Chicago. Awesome, and, dude. Oh my god! So fucking. Have you guys ever been to Austin, Texas? We went together. Yeah, we went to uh, Psych Fest. How long ago was that? Uh, 2014. That really? Okay. Th- only three years ago. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. That's but when I started dating Kelly. Aww. So, I don't. You guys were at Psych Fest, so I don't know if it was the same sort of experience. But the time I spent in Austin taught me a few things. One, they put cheese sauce on fucking everything. With that in mind, never have I seen such a dense population of such beautiful women. Definitely. And I, like, it's so, granted, my eyesight's not really all there, but I can still make out basic shapes. Such They're that as beautiful that you see them. That, well, I can make out body shapes, and I know that considering how much cheese sauce they're eating, they should not are, be as are slim. Th- are they covered in cheese? <laughs> Only in my dreams, baby. Only in my dreams. So that was fucking wild. Also, I learned, and I don't know if you guys experienced this, people in Texas don't know how to fucking talk. Like, even on my flight to Austin, and every person with whom I spoke while in Austin spoke very quietly. Like, they, like, fucking whispered. Really? It was really fucking weird. Yeah. Did you not... You know, no, well... not at all. Well, I, didn't, I didn't notice that. I don't know if it was with you or... No, no, it was when I went with Adela... And we were rooming with Magic Castles. Every, like, near the end of the trip, because I think they thought they were going to offend me, they said that I I sound really, I got a really bad Chicago accent. Really? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what is the, I don't, when I think of Chicago accent, I think of, like, Chris Farley with the. Oh, yeah, that's fucking weird. The bears. The, the bear, you know. Oh, some sausage and so the clubs. What, what are you doing? Yeah, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, that's oh, yeah. that's not me. And then and then I think they did like a like a Jersey accent, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, no, that's that's I'm pretty sure that's New Jersey. <laughs> and then at the end of the cover, they're just like, Phil, you just sound like you want to start a fight every minute. <laughs> like, oh, which isn't too far from you the truth. You want to fight about it, <laughs> uh, right? Uh, I mean, you, you, what are you saying here? <laughs> I just <laughs> let's see. There you go again. Always starting to start a fight. All right, all right. So let's just, let's cool it. Uh, enough of that. Enough. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so awesome. So what do you, so they don't know how to talk because they whisper? Well, one, they whisper, and I just had so many of these roundabout fucking conversations. Uh, same thing, no one knows how to drive. What do you mean, roundabout, like they're just repetitive, same subject? Like, they don't understand what you're asking, and you don't know how to explain it any clearer like that sort of shit like i and that really wasn't like the majority of the interactions because the, most of the people in austin are not from texas but yeah. you can kind of tell like the locals cuz it's the weird austin <laughs> exactly right keep austin weird um but no just it's portlandia in texas pretty much I've never really seen Portlandia, but that's that's the impression I gather. But there's so I have a coworker who's from no no I'm not going to talk about him because he might what? listen to this and I don't <laughs> want to offend him. But like I, a lot of times I have difficulty understanding him, and I went to Texas and I was like, oh, this makes total sense. He's from Austin. He's not from Austin. He's from Dallas. So okay. I'm just grouping it all together as yeah. a Texas thing. And the people with whom I was staying said, oh, yeah, people in Texas don't speak well. And I'm trying to think who Texas. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones, Paul Wall. 
Um, ZZ Top. Woody Harrelson. Um, Pantera. Yeah. Oh, I can't understand what the fuck Phil's saying. Ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's because uh, he's a heroin addict. While... Or or, they, or recovering, which is well, worse. I think it's, well, I think it's a Texas thing more so than a heroin thing. Mm. Yeah, I think the Texas thing came first, and then the heroin just made it much, much worse. I I, I think the Texas made it much worse. It was the heroin <laughs> for... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it's a chicken or the egg sort of situation. Yeah, yeah. But... So I saw Thrill Kill Cult when I was down there. Yeah. At this gothic nightclub, and it was fucking awesome. It was a really cool venue. Yeah. And you can get drinks at shows for like five or six dollars. Yeah. Which is unheard of in fucking Chicago. Like if you're at the House of Blues, you're paying like eight dollars at least for a beer, and it, it blew my mind. What, Plus, what was the name of it? The Elysian Nightclub. Okay. And so we go there and. Everyone is dressed head to toe in black. And I'm the one asshole wearing my tie-dye, fairly well Grateful Dead shirt. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck. So I just, as if the cane didn't make me stick out enough. Like, <laughs> I was the only asshole in tie-dye. And so I went to merch and I wound up getting a t-shirt because I was like, I want to fit in. I want to be cool. What shirt did you get? Was it the tour one? The 30th anniversary. Okay. With the green and the eye and yeah. things. Uh, super cool shirt. And I was so excited to wear it the next day. So my friend and I went out for breakfast to a place called Biscuits and Groovy. Yeah. And I was wearing my black Thrill Kill Cult shirt to show it off. And we go to this breakfast place and fucking everyone there is wearing tie dye. And I'm the one asshole wearing black. It's like. <laughs> you never fit in, Phil. <laughs> I, fucking forget it. It doesn't matter how hard I try, man. You I just, get out of Austin. That I stick out like a sore thumb. Uh. So that was fun. We spent a lot of time at this bar called Baker Street, which is a Sherlock Holmes themed bar. Sherlock. <laughs> yeah. Do people dress like that uh, old N- English or? No, they don't do fucking anything. The only reason it's oh, Sherlock it's Holmes. Oh, it's because the decoration. Yeah. Th- what am I? Not, no, not idiot. even the decorations. Just the stupid name because Sherlock oh. Holmes, I guess, lived or his detective office was on Baker Street. Oh. And in Texas? No, no, in England. But this bar was Sherlock wow. Holmes themed. But the only thing that it had in common with Sherlock Holmes Mm -hmm. was the stupid name. So it's like, oh, cool. I'm at a Sherlock Holmes themed bar. Yeah. I'm going to drink a Lone Star. You know, it it was so funny. And so our stupid joke was, there's mysteries to solve. We must go to Baker Street. And so we would just go there and get plastered. And it was great. And again, cheese sauce on everything. Fraser episode here. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly right. Um, Then we drove to New Orleans. Which was fucking awesome. Yeah. We um. So I went with Aaron, a good friend of mine, and we've been listening to this series of detective novels on audiobook. Yeah. And I know, John, you said you had never seen Buffy or Angel, correct? Yeah, I've never seen that show. Do you know no any of the characters at all, or just? Uh, mm? I know that chick from Buffy. Okay, that's about sure. it. Sure, Sarah uh, Michelle Michelle Geller. Geller, Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Phil, are you familiar with the show at all? Yeah, I it was on like what Channel Nine at, uh, yeah, growing up all the like, time. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, think I ever watched one. So, do you remember the blonde vampire? It was a guy. Yeah, right? I think so. Yeah. So his name was Spike, and he's played by an actor named uh, James Marsters, and he narrates these books, which is why Aaron and I started listening to them yeah. because we love Buffy and we're like, fuck yeah, James Marsters. Did you, did you guys like rent a car? No, Aaron lives down in Austin. Really? Yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah. I must have. Uh, f- that's something I must have forgot <laughs> because I, I knew Aaron really well. Uh, so, so yeah, no, he's been down there for like a year or so. So we took his car and we listened to this detective novel, narrated by Spike the Vampire, and the series of books is called The Dresden Files, and it's like these gritty detective books. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Uh, but it's about a private eye who's also a wizard. Yeah. And he's really, really rude to women and fights demons and vampires and werewolves. Yeah. And it's so fucking funny. Like, so we absolutely love it. So we listened to one on the way there. And we get to New Orleans. And uh, long story short, we wind up befriending a pedicab driver who, you know, like the bicycle taxi people. Yeah. And so she takes us under her wing and like just shows us the town. And the next morning, 
you know, like the uh, the night we drive in, we just go to like four bars, I guess. I don't remember most of it. But the next morning, she is taking us on a tour of the French Quarter. And she explains the new hustle in New Orleans. And what happens is... Is that a dance move? <laughs> <laughs> do the new hustle do, 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 do. no but uh, people on the street will ask you hey man i bet i can guess where you got those shoes and if they catch your attention you say oh yeah where they'll say the street and then they'll beat the shit out of you and mug you and she was like if anyone says that to you you just keep walking don't don't what? pay him any mind yeah are, are you being serious right now dead fucking serious that Hey man, where did you get those shoes? Or no. That hey so- man, that, that sounds like a uh, scene in like a '90s like gang movie. That Where'd you get your Nikes, boy? Yeah. Hey man, I bet I can guess where you got those shoes. Oh, yeah, where? The streets. And then they just kick your ass and take your shoes. Yeah. And your wallet and everything else. You so know, ever just- since I heard that rumor in Chicago, mm-hmm. I made sure I had the shittiest, horrible-looking fucking shoes. Yeah. Man, I don't know if you saw my shoes, but I've got sweet new Adidas classic Ooh, kickers. Yeah. And so I was like, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Um, but that was cool. <laughs> when we were in Louisiana, we had traditional Cajun food, like hot dogs and pizza. Because <laughs> the, we were down there, and I realized that it had been almost a week since I had had pizza. Yeah. And, you know, being from Chicago, like that shit doesn't fly. I was like, man, I just need a slice. That's all I need. Yeah. Then I swear to God, I'll never need it again. Just one slice and then I'm cool, man. So we went, we got pizza. I saw the Mississippi River um, and it was fucking awesome. I love New Orleans. Have you yeah. guys ever been there? I've never been there. Oh, man. It's it's so nice. I don't know. I think it was really cool because we got the local experience, but um, that was cool. Spoon was in town. Ooh. They were playing the House of Blues. And I was like, nah, man, we got a House of Blues in Chicago. Yeah, fuck They that. have House of Blues in New Orleans, too? Yeah, dude. There's House like of Blues everywhere. everywhere. There's yeah, House really? of Blues everywhere, yeah. It's isn't, a chain. isn't that uh, owned by Sylvester Stone or Arnold? Like the House of Blues mm, chain? Or am maybe. I thinking of, pl- oh, I'm thinking of Planet Hollywood. I think you're right, yeah. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. I don't think Planet Hollywood exists anymore. I yeah. think there's one in Vegas, no? Well, that is the one coming, you asshole. <laughs> it's probably the only one, now. No. Uh, wait. Can I mention something? Mm-hmm. That reminds me, Sherlock, how you're saying Sherlock and you, you, Holmes and you're starting yeah. talking old English. Right. So I've been recently trying to get into, back to my black metal talk, into um, older black metal. And I was playing Bathory on the way. And funny thing, my kid was telling me the other day, he's like, so you know how Vampire and Dracula ri- originated? And he was telling me about, you know, do you know the story about Transylvania and and all that, do you know? Vlad the Impaler. Yeah, yeah. Like the true story of uh, Elizabeth Bathory. Mm. So so there was, uh, I haven't really read that much into it, so I'm going to sound like an ass, but that's the that's what I do on this show. Sure. It's um, And you do a great job, by the way. Thanks, man. You want to fight about it? I'm, I'm a <laughs> good there you go. John, will you talk to him? No, so he, he's just looking away. He doesn't want to get involved, that fucking racist. No. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Sean. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, but um, so uh, I was uh, I was re- I was at work and reading about how did Bathory get their name? Oh, Elizabeth Bathory. So I guess there was this line of I think it was like 1600s of this Bathory family, and they were just super di- uh, disturbed. It I guess it was an area that that like would now be Poland, but it was like Hungarian at the time. And there was this family line who I guess they got like um, royalty. And, like, Elizabeth Bathory was, like, a witch who would, like, kidnap uh, townspeople and, sure. and rape them and do sure. uh, black magic on them and shit. Well, those were simpler times. And and actually, and the reason why I ran into it today was because, oh, here's my kid talking about Dracula. And then at the same time, she uh, she was technically from, like, Transylvania and all that. And uh, there was a guy, is like, Gregory Bathory who died on this day because on Wikipedia, what happened on this day? And I guess Gregory Bathory was like a guy who was like really into black magic and he was like, he was a ruler and they were going after him. There was a guy that, there's some guy that he really fucked over. He like really, uh, 
he like killed his whole family or something and the 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 it was like another king or something and they and he took his whole army to go try and find him because he was fleeting because that whole forces fam- and all the king's men yeah so when they, so here's what's really bizarre about this uh, to add to this Bathory legacy they found him and they uh deca- he he's like you know, back then he's like, "Oh, what can I do that's fucking sick like this maniac who fucked over my family?" So they decapitated him, and then they, uh, he hired. He's like, "Oh, this isn't enough to decapitate you. I'm going to hire a painter to paint this beauty," and he made an entire painting of just this fucking head in a towel, and then the, I guess whatever the medieval police the uh, high board that would like regulate laws and stuff saw this and they're like no this is fucked up this is disrespectful i don't care how fucked up he was so, so for the funeral to respect the family they had to sew his head back on to put in the casket <laughs> and then and then the, the reason why they reminded me of because have you guys ever heard of the grimsby no, not Gr- oh, what the fuck went on that grimsby brother. no yeah i was just about to say that no it, it's something like the grim's tales do you know what that yeah. is You've heard of Grimm's Tales. Yeah. Did you hear about how Disney ripped that off? Mm. You never heard about that? No, the Brothers Grimm. Yeah, the Brothers Grimm. Oh, I was going to quickly know. end my Thrill Kill call. Is that a cool? Yeah, yeah. No, go Sorry, for it. Sorry, because I just set up the camera and the th- recording. Sure. No, go for it. So, no. Where did I leave off? With me getting in the, Okay, so we, we talked about finding a CD that was gems. It was yeah. the 90s, the dark so, ages. So, so, I was I was starting to go see them because uh, I was like, oh, fuck, they're from Chicago. What? And at first, I'm like, ah, we don't need to see them. They're from Chicago. They'll always play. But then I realized how old they were. So I started seeing them regularly. And I think I saw them twice with you. And then the third time, when I went with you, like, every time, I don't know. There's just certain people you go to a show with and you have a fucking connection we just dance goofy. Hell we have yes. a fucking good good time. Dude, who you gives me a, a sh- tobacco? Who gives a shit if you're wearing a thrill kill cult shirt at a restaurant full of tie dyes? You know <laughs> exactly right. And so so I this time I'm like you know what my brother's super goofy. He gets really fucking like stupid at he he likes to go to sh- he doesn't like to go out to shows. So um he when I take him to anything he just sort of likes to mock it or make fun of it that i just to sort of like height like lighten the mood he's projecting his sadness on you yes and um so i'm like fuck man we should go you have to go to thrill kill cult you don't understand you could do whatever you want there you could just literally just it's a great place to dance when you're not a dancer because i am not a dancer i dance horrible and i danced so i take him and i go at the time I had uh I was selling a shitload of weed sure. and my uncle was a huge customer and uh he told me that uh I was like, Well I gotta make a shitload of brownies because I had <laughs> I had two customers, they were uh like computer CEO uh, computer company CEOs. And they're like, Yeah, we like your shit, but uh we love your brownies. Like I made brownies one time and I made like twelve and they're like, dude, they're amazing. Cause I looked up like how do you make it the, you know how do you make it the most the the most purified, strongest sure. compressed shit, and I made this hash oil funfetti. Yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah, it was just black. You know when you get the hash pens and it's like yellow. This stuff was black. I literally just I, while I was making it, I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna taste it, and I was high making it because. And and I asked my uncle. My my uncle kind of reminds me of a uh, sly version of Borat. I was like, oh, so listen, I'm going to make a shitload of brownies. Where can I do this? Because it stinks up the house and weed already smells. Well, if uh, you give me some for free, maybe you can do it here. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, all right, well, uh, and that's when what can family's I, when c- all about. Exactly. Family first. Exactly right. So I so I, I'm like, well how much can he's like, Oh, I don't care, man, I'm gonna have a brownie. <laughs> I'm like, All right. So I I go over there and I made eighty brownies. And uh Wait, can you tell the rest of the story in the voice of your uncle? 
That's I pretty go cool. over there. I'm like, oh, fuck, hey, shit. I'm going to make Eddie brownies. I'm a chef, you know, Chef Marek. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's enough of that. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he'd be able to be a good chef with that voice. You know? no. Oh, yeah, this spaghetti I fucked up. So <laughs> what? Let's, uh, let me rape you. You, know? you should make uh, a, a YouTube video of you making brownies with that voice. I sh- I've, oh, man. Come on. Oh, man, I shouldn't have tasted it. <laughs> My hand is on fire. Let's, let's, let's check if the mic is good. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so, uh, I, so I made 80 brownies. All of them were bought by these two computer nerds. Like it was fucking crazy. They they sold, but so I had a few. And um, despite making our uh, my brother, I'm not even getting get into that. But point point is, I made I made a Thanksgiving video of yeah. my brother and I fucked up on these brownies. But these brownies were super fucking strong. And they you went so, to the concert and you danced. Oh no! So I I was offering my brother smokes a lot of weed, and I'm like, yo, I'll give you a brownie. I, the one thing I want, and he's like, no, I don't know if I want to go still. I'm like, well, dude, that's the one birthday present I want. I want you to go with me and see this band. You don't have to buy me shit. I'm buying you tickets. Just dance your fucking ass off. Dude, I I remember talking to people telling me they haven't taken acid as strong as that brownie was because, or, or enough at, like as strong as that affects you. And I had half of one. Half hour goes by. It's before the show, before my brother's going to drive me. And I'm like, ah. Brownie's not working. Not working. Got to eat more. Got to eat. I eat the rest of the brownie. Still not working. It's an hour and a half. We're, we're like about to reach. I'm like, fuck this shit. I ate a second one. As soon as we get to the show. Wom, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. I, yeah. It, that's what it feels like. If It feels like what I remember is... um you feel like everyone's going to attack you and it felt like hair was growing rapidly from my ears. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's how it felt. It was just like, you hear static, like, it's a really bad panic. Really bad panic attack about everything. I'm not liking this. I need to go home. Where's my teddy bear? Like, and I go in there and the fir- of of course, now everybody's probably like, well, what the fuck is that? Why would you go to some crazy industrial band on brownies? And I said, well, in order to test that these are the good shit, even though after selling 75, I'm like, well, I got to go to the scariest fucking thing and see how these work. And what do you know? Sure enough, they work. Th- thrill kill called The first thing I see is like a 50-year-old woman who was probably like a passed around junkie Mm-mm-mm. back in the day wearing a tutu. Her skin is sagging worse than my nutsack will in 10 years from now. It was absolutely... And she looked like somebody who tanned too much. So kind of, I, I'm guessing it kind of looks like uh, Trump's nutsack because it, it was kind of orangey. All right. But anyways... Now I got to go I, masturbate. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> so I, I, I ran out of the show crying. I just walk in. They take my ticket. I run out of the show crying. I'm crying drastically. My brother's running after me. He's like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, I can't take this. I can't just walk with me for a second. And we walked about a mile and then a mile back. He's like, he's like, dude, dude, you just pay, dude, what the hell is wrong? He's kind of like half laughing at me. Oh, why are you laughing at me? Dude, we're just going for a walk. I need, I need some support right now. Why? I'm trying to see that. I want to have a good, you know, good experience with seeing this band. Uh, well, we're two fucking miles away. <laughs> we, and we start walking. I'm like, dude, no, dude, let's just go home. He's like, dude, the show didn't even fucking start, and you're already crying. I'm like, I saw that those fucking Trump nutsacks in a tutu. Let's get out of here. And I didn't see them. What's funnier is the next. So I had this experience. I go home. It was absolutely horrible. It got, It went on for three days. Not kidding. Three fucking days. Everything is after me. There's hair growing out of every side of my fucking body. And I just, I want to like rub against everything to take the panic away. Just like start a fire with my body in the friction of the carpet. And third day, I just go up to my brother in tears. I grabbed him by the fucking shirt and I'm like, listen, I got this assault knife here. If I'm going to be permanently retarded from this, I want you to fucking slit my throat. 
because I don't want you and mom to see me get fucking mentally like just have fucking mental pro- I don't want to be a vegetable Happy I thought I was gonna I would never smoke or do me. after that experience no no yeah I, I, I'm never gonna do edible a- after me. that I'm never gonna do edibles again never again oh, not with that attitude no. come on chin up never again and, and and what's so so here's where the, the story escalates even funnier the next year 25th anniversary of Thrill Kill Cult I was going out with Kelly she hadn't been to a lot of shows with me. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. First date was uh, Pizza Underground, which, you know what that is? Oh, my God. I remember when you went oh. to that show. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to take that. T- that was Milwaukee, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. You were going to. But we fell in love, Bill, over oh. Macaulay Culkin covering Velvet Underground. Man. And they passed out dominoes during the show in the mosh pit instead of people fighting. There's pizza. Man. You know, but. God, that's a real Disney you got a problem fairy with tale. That? You got a problem with that? Then I get into Oh, dude, that's beautiful. Uh, so, so, so we, so I get thrill kill call. I'm like, oh, VIP package. I want to impress Kelly because she's a new girlfriend. Get VIP package, meet and greet. <laughs> I'm sitting there with Groovy Man, the singer, backstage. Don't know what to say because you you just chill with the band backstage for an hour. You could do whatever the fuck you want. And everybody's there like, oh, yeah, you know that 88 show when I uh, was still doing heroin, but my, I, I didn't get to see my kids. You know, everybody's <laughs> just telling these stories, you know, like oh, it's just these ridiculous past stories. And I'm just like, so I went to see you guys two years ago, but I ran out of the show because I took too many drugs. But um, I'm never going to take drugs when I see you guys. But I didn't even see her perform. I'm just like rambling to an idol, you know. And he's just like, sure. yeah, I used to take a lot of drugs back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I oh, ruined it. <laughs> oh, that's powerful bonding. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I saw them this year. Didn't take any brownies. And, yeah, didn't panic. So that was good. When I saw them in Austin... They were on stage for so long that the venue turned the lights off on them. Really? Yeah. So they were performing like they performed like three songs in you utter darkness. You guys gotta leave. Yeah. Well, sh- doors opened at nine thirty. They didn't hit the stage until midnight. And then, oh like, wow, it was like one thirty. And there, and there was no op- or was there an opener? There was an opener who came on at like ten. And then, like, they were done at like eleven. Yeah, I want to say, and then. There was like an hour of like nothing. Wow. Except for me drinking a lot of Texas beer. A lot of Texas. How's the Texas Lone beer? Lone Star. L- I drank my fair share of Lone Star, but um, what was it? Shiner, they called it. And I don't know, there's some like grapefruit like brand of it. And so it was like Shiner Ruby Red and whatever. I wasn't paying for it. Aaron treated me for my birthday, but yeah, uh, there I was, just Mr. Tie-Dye Man sitting in the crowd, and it was awesome. Yep. So. Speaking uh when we were talking about Chicago tourism. Wait, will you check the audio? Will you see if yeah. it's still recording? Yeah, it's still going. Nice. Okay, cool. All good. All bars are up. We're close enough. Nice. Speaking of Chicago. Oh, speaking of Chicago, um, it's a beautiful city, isn't it? Yeah, I love your accent. <laughs> no, what, what, what kind of accent do I have? You f- want to fight about it? <laughs> Cl- classic New Jerseyan. What? What? What's wrong with my phone? <laughs> Nothing is working good. It's working, yeah, it's working better than good, John. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> no, but um, uh, did you guys know? I didn't know this that, uh, I guess. I guess it would appeal to somebody like me who loves the mafia. They have a Chicago Al Capone tour, which I thought would be super interesting. Even if you're not into that shit, like just Chicago history, just saying like, so this is where he got arrested. So this is where like, you know, the the untouchable scene of coming out of court was, or uh, this is where the St. Valentine's Day massacre, you know? And you know what's even fucking crazier? This is a great story I got to tell you guys. Two stories. First of all, do you guys know what the Family Secrets trial is? Mm, I do not. No. Never heard of it. Okay, have you seen Casino? Mm, no. Have you seen Casino? 
Yeah. Okay, so who Joe Pesci is in that movie, All that he's from Chicago. Casino is actually about Chicago controlling Las Vegas. And all of that shit was, I'm actually reading a book about it now, the first book I'll read. No, but uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's about um, basically the whole structure of how it, how it moved, to, how it started off from Al Capone and where it went, how it moder- modernized from there, and who controlled what neighborhood, whatever, because there's like a South Side crew and whatever. So, what? Casino. Oh, okay. So, interesting fact. So, I started reading about uh, Family Secrets Trial. What it was is in 2005, all the families in Chicago of mob got shut down. And one of them was Joe Pesci in Casino. Whereas, so, um, anyways, what's really crazy is, uh, John, do you remember where we would go when I lived in Chicago and flatten pennies on the railroad? Uh, you know, it's, I was thinking that before you said it. That's the weird thing, but yeah. Why would you think of that? I have no idea. That's weird. Well, you really think it? Th- yeah, I was seriously so Out of nowhere. That. Yeah, out of, right before he said that, right when you said, do you remember, I thought of the railroad area. <laughs> That's fucking crazy because yeah. you know what's absolutely insane the first place that got raided shut down demolished and doesn't exist anymore do you remember that so on the north side of the railroad was like where i lived right then to the east was that cemetery well it was on both sides but then do you remember to the south there was that bar there that restaurant the loon cafe uh i don't remember that there was there was a bar there and it was like a it had like a swan um lo- logo but it was a circle and it was like black you know like towards kitty land uh. that bar 10 feet away where we used to flatten pennies was the number one meeting spot for that whole fucking chicago mob the whole time which That's is crazy yeah no i i think it's hilarious cuz like i'm i'm surprised we didn't see like somebody getting dragged into a trunk or something while we're flattening pennies on the railroad but probably any- did just don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Too much but, cough syrup. Hey guys, can we <laughs> Yeah. Can we can we drag some bodies with you? <laughs> wow, yeah. we mister. No, just flatten this body in the road. Oh, cool. But uh, no, so what's even crazier? Here's another crazier story. Have I ever told you guys about the hostel, the pro- the prostitute ring with Carlos? No. Seriously? I never told you this? You told me about the underground porn shop, yeah. Slash go kart, yeah, yeah. So the go kart place, <laughs> that wasn't porn shop. <laughs> no, no. Do you remember? Have I taken you to that go kart place? Yeah. Okay. So here's what's crazy. I'm not gonna name names because I might get fucking whacked or some shit. You already said Carlos. Yeah. Well, well, Carlo, <laughs> Whoops. Well, well, Carlos. Yeah, he's gonna chase me in his geo go, geo metro. Carlos in his, and yeah, in his fucking go kart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carlos and his go kart, Scarface too, right there, that Cuban. So other than Carlos, don't <laughs> so, name names. Okay, so so he so he was working at this go kart place in Melrose Park. All right, there's another name. <laughs> yeah, you're fucking I'm, this I'm up. Just, I'm just, <laughs> you're fucked up, dude. <laughs> no, but so so um so he's working at this go kart place. When when I met him, uh, he was working at this place. He would repair all the go karts. It was a fucking great place. I wish I, I I would go there every day if it wasn't expensive. You go these go karts go up to what like forty miles an hour. Yeah, it depends on how many turns there are. Yeah. So so he was working at this place, and his bosses they paid only cash. And I also found out their name. Not gonna mention <laughs> that for sure. <laughs> is is the name of a towing company. Okay, and and that towing company is over all of Chicago. Everywhere you fucking go, you see those abbreviations, and it's those two. It's two sons. Okay, <laughs> and like Tatooine. No, no. The planet Tatooine has two sons. Oh, all right. Sorry. There, there's my Star Wars joke for the podcast. <laughs> right, so, 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 so. Anyways, sorry. so one day I go to pick up Carlos because his Geo Metro go-kart wasn't working and he's like hey man and this is like in a really okay so this is everything you would picture in a really sketchy chicago area it's like a it's like an episode of sopranos it's in a really sketchy 
uh, a commercial area. It's all factories and, and truck docks. And Carlos is like, yo, we're, I'm waiting for these sons to drop off their fucking yellow envelope. No joke. They of cash. So I get paid. I'm like, well, what you don't, you can't just clock in. And it's not, and he's like, no, it's only cash. I'm like, well, what the fuck are we going to do? He's like, well, let's go here. And there was an adult world, uh, porn shop right across the street, like 10 feet away, r- directly across the street. I'm like, well, okay. All right. You know what? You want to be fucking cute. Let's go and see this, you know, see how goofy I, I never been to that place. Cause I just picture just running into getting, you know, flicked by dildos in the neck everywhere you walk so <laughs> i didn't i didn't know that it i mean it pretty much just every porn shop just looks like a blockbuster you know so we go there and he's like we're just walking through and i'm just you, you know we're just walking through making fun of names like ew girls gone wild but mild because it's in mexico or something I, I i don't know just just making fun of all these stupid names like broke back anus you know just just all these uh goofy porn names and while we're walking through i'm not gonna name names we'll we'll call, we'll call them we'll call them phil and bill the brothers okay <laughs> perfect okay yes. so we're walking through speaking of broke and, back and ca- <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're walking through and the lady there because because we're, we're just two fucking morons just just looking at random shit calling out random body parts like oh are you guys looking for anything in particular and i didn't kind of i didn't think she was coming on to us but she's like yeah anything in particular and i'm like carlos like no no you know phil and bill sent us over it's like oh really and no joke she fucking slides the wall open the wall there's a whole fucking shelf of videos connected to this wall that she slides open and like a painting and a clock she slides it open there's a shower and spa area with just shit all over the fucking ground. And we're like, oh, cool. There's a spa. She's like, yeah, wait, there's more. And she's like wearing nothing but a robe and like a bikini under. I'm like, oh, it's probably just a cashier at a porn shop. Well, we keep walking. And then they have, I don't know I don't know what they're called. I, I keep forgetting. You know in the old days when they had um, prostitutes? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they're called. Yeah, n- n- now they're just called uh, you know, j- uh, I-, I don't I don't even know where I'm going with that. But <laughs> a- anyways. No, no, you know those things where there's a window in between you and and uh the girl strips in front of you. What are those called where you like, put a oh, like, a booth? Like Boondock Saints style? Yeah, yeah, like that. They had that except there's a chick stripping in front of you and you can actually pay a chick to give you a blowjob. In in while while that other girl is stripping, I'm like, oh cool, let's keep moving along and get the fuck out of here. Then she takes us to a theater, and there's like four guys in this open theater. It looks like a it, it looks like a theater in like a high school, you know, with folding chairs and just <laughs> like. And there's there's like no crowd but four dudes. One of them is naked with a with another chick, and and he's fucking her right there. And I'm like, dude at the same time as how crazy this is this is awesome but i i didn't really know what was going on at the time sure about a like a week later i go on i i like i'm watching the news randomly at, at fucking at um my house living with my ma and they were uh they said what I don't know if it was the mayor or like a political affiliate got caught in one of those in one of those booths getting his dick sucked and they have a hidden and it's on YouTube like the whole fucking like they took they took that place down because it was like a prostitute ring and I don't know it was kind of crazy like like, it's kind of crazy because everybody says that suburb like that's where all the old casino mob guys are. And yeah, I don't know. It, It was it was just funny as shit because in the video they show like night vision like like this guy getting his dick sucked in in his fucking tux and, and <laughs> Phil and Carlos awkwardly just walking around <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah 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 we're, we're we're just trolling you know the uh, back of the night vision hey this is cool you know in the background so 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 anyway so anyway yeah get the fuck out of here I'm getting my dick now but a- anyways um the funniest part is when they interview all the wives. they they like interviewed all the wives in the neighborhood 
And it's just funny because it's just like you already know this prostitution ring is bad. You know why it's bad. I, I mean, I don't know. I guess I don't know if if it's really bad. But a- anyways, overall in general, you know why it's bad. But it's just funny when they interview the wives because it's like, I don't know, if it's it, it's like if they interviewed a murder and they'd be like, so, John, what do you think of this murder? Do you think it was good? Do you think it was good the way they capped this nigga's ass? You know? Oh, and, don't use that word, Phil. Okay. Do you think it's good the way they capped these Phil and Bill brothers? Okay. <laughs> Much okay, better. I'll, I'll edit that. Okay. That, I just okay. throw in a bleep. Okay, okay. So... Then we're gonna need like six hours of footage, by the way, if we have Roscoe here, <laughs> with 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 his <laughs> fucking mouth. No, but any any anyways. So he so uh so so it's just so funny the way they're interviewing these wives because they're just like, yeah, you know, it's not good to have it, and you know, it's a mile away from the school, and we don't know Think what they're doing. The children. Yeah, yeah. What could they be doing here? You know, they're supposed to, like like what could they be doing? It's a fucking porn shop. Your fucking husband doesn't al- already doesn't think you're attractive. You're worried about it whether he's getting his dick sucked or imagining it. You know, I don't know. It's just really funny, but that's my story with the the go karts and the Phil and Bill brothers. Good old Kitty Land. Yeah, <laughs> good old. Yeah, you know what's cra- you know what was really funny is I took four years uh welding school for uh r- right there at Triton College where Kitty Kitty Land used to be. The biggest fucking amusement park. It was. It was just like it was like Dinosaur World in Clifford, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, like, well, if well, if we don't end this fucking podcast, if we don't go to Dinosaur World, you know. No, but a- anyways. Um. So, uh, I was taking welding class, <laughs> and my 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 teacher. He was really kind of like that, you know, strong, stern John Wayne type. Sure. sure. A- he loved prostitutes. <laughs> yeah. So 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 it was just so funny because he almost like teared up telling because uh the my last year of the class was when they were shutting down Kitty Land and he was just talking about he built the entire uh train railroad oh. there He's just like yeah that was that was one of the greatest projects ever and it was just great to see this badass fall into fucking tears you know <laughs> right today on Modern Marvels the shitty Kitty Train at Kitty Land yes. <laughs> The greatest undertaking. What a schmuck. What's over there now, anyway? Is I don't the know. The porno shop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <but> that's <laughs> still going. <laughs> it's part of the mob tour. Yeah. <laughs> Man, was the Green Mill part of the mob tour? The Green Mill. Yeah, you ever been? I think I saw a show there. Oh my I'm god, dude! So I always get that mixed up with a uh, Abbey Pub for some reason. Well, Abbey's closed. Oh, you know what? I think I played a show in Green Mill. No way. Like no, it's like Lawrence and Broadway, like right by the Riviera. No, okay, like super fancy. Yeah, like super okay, fancy okay. jazz Piano club. Bar. Okay, yeah, then never mind. No. But oh my god, dude, that is something I'd recommend to someone visiting. Did Chicago. I go with you, John, to see a jazz band there? Uh, no, I, I've been there a couple of times, but not with you. Okay. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> no, we we'll, we can go there. You guys want to go right now? All right, we're going. Right. No, no, There's no, always like stupid. a $30 cover charge, though. No, when I went there, it was 15 Well, two people, so. All oh, right. Plus yeah. Chicago tax, Crook <laughs> County. Right. You're telling me. Dude, I got a Crook County shirt. Hell yeah. And I still haven't washed my shirt that's covered in guar goo. Guar, oh, man. Yeah. Um, is it above, is it on your ceiling pin? No, it's... I don't know where it is. I don't know where half of that shit went. I got the Jack Skellington Zippo, which doesn't work. And I got a grinder. And I bought a pair of earrings. One of which I lost. The other one got kicked out of my head at Guar. I spent way too much money at Riot Fest. And I'm going to spend just as much next year. Yeah. I'm going to budget for it better. You know what's fucking great? is? Did you hear about that Christmas package? No. Yeah, so... Christmas package is like so you know how we got pre-sale which was like a fucking half price of the normal price yeah 
Christmas sale is half price of the half price for VIP. Yeah, be, Ooh, be, because baby. because because you don't know who the lineup is, because that you know they don't announce it till like a month before or whatever. Which is, but, but I'm convinced because look at fucking for the past five years the lineups have Killer been amazing. Lineups. Yeah. Oh my god. So, anyway, back to my love life. I've been talking with this girl on Tinder. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, she. Is all about going to local shows, and she loves music and concerts. And I'm like, right on. Uh, did you go to Riot Fest? And she says, yeah. And I was like, okay, top five performances. The top five performances she listed were like all of the bands we didn't see. So like A Day to Remember, Mayday Parade, uh, The Story So Far, and you know, like the more emo yeah, shit yeah. that we didn't see. And I was like... Oh, LOL. We have nothing in common. Ha, ha, ha. (laughs) And it's like, ah. Anyway, the moral of the story is two people can go to the same place at the same time and have two radically different experiences. Think about that. And I would have told her my top five, but she didn't have the courtesy to ask. It was like me talking to this girl. It's just been, so, hey, I'm just going to ask you questions. And maybe sometime you'll have the decency to ask me something. Hasn't happened yet. But she's 20, so, you know, like, it's okay. I mean... I had a, I had a, I had a great online experience. Did you? Um, so, um, I think I told you before, um, when you thought, uh, I think when I was telling you when my buddy White Boy, for, uh, the one white kid who lives in a bad neighborhood, who... Uh, when I told him, I'm like, hey, sure. do you know any whores? Chucky from the hood. Chucky <laughs> from the hood. Yes, Chucky from the hood. <laughs> Get back to that. No, no, no. So, so he, uh, <laughs> he, uh, dude, you're being racist. I didn't say it. I, I said white boy. Okay. I'm trying to no, cross the line. I'm trying to be edgy as a comic. Okay. So, so I, uh, so I was talking to white boy and I think I told you this last, year, like, I was like, yo, do you know any horse? He goes, yeah, there's this chick. And I went out with this chick. She was fucking great. She looked like uh, a better looking Snooky, because Snooky to me look. She I never fucked a girl that looked like a Jersey Shore chick. To me, flaws turn me on more because it's not your typical fucking modeling magazine cover. You know what I mean? Like it's not a the a Barbie doll. You're not fucking like. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're 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 not fucking the, you're not fucking what society is telling you is beautiful that that eight that eight fi- you know. So my rule of thumb is to have sex with anyone who consents. So <laughs> so I say fuck you society. Okay. That's so so uh, so uh, anyways she uh well well yeah she, of course she had consent she's a whore so she's like consent all the time. No but um any, any anyways so um. Uh, I I messed around with her for a little bit. Then she said that I'm not trendy enough. Mm. And then weirdly, four years later, so here's a f- pretty good story. Four years later, she tells me, four years later, I'm on OK Cupid, looking for a girlfriend, and I randomly run into her. And she's like, "Don't I know you from somewhere?" And I'm like, "I don't. Do I kind of look like someone good from the behind?" Oh yeah, that's you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and and then, and and uh so we started talking again and once again at the time I recently trimmed my beard she's like oh no are you f- wearing flannel do you have a long beard well, then you just then you just look like a loser I'm like all right I'll wear a fucking fake Lincoln beard for you get over here and let's do this you know that's romance that's right. Yeah. That's where you get kinky when you bring out the Lincoln beards, you know? See, your problem is that you're not trendy enough. My problem is that I'm too trendy. Okay. And I feel like that's why women don't really appreciate me. I mean. Yeah. I like you just the way you are. <sighs> God, Phil. But so so what's great is I say, hey, can you, um, you know, so you're, because I didn't even realize, we're talking on, uh, we're we're talking online for like a month and I didn't even realize she lived a block away from me. And I'm like, well, why the fuck won't you come over right now? It's like, I told you, because cause, is that beard there? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Get off the beard, all right? And she's like, all right. 
let's let's sex and i'm like this is so fucking stupid <laughs> you know i'm like all right fuck you i'm calling somebody else and on that list of horrors that i knew at the time there was everybody else was whatever tightening up or doing some vagina exercises but anyways so uh, so kegels yeah i believe they're yes, called kegels uh sorry i didn't mean to be offensive Mm-mm, no but, there's there's a term for it okay so I, uh, well, I, I knew a girl who used to pick up a beer can with her asshole. Is that kind of like Kegels? Mm, similar, but different. Okay. Okay. Anyways, um, so she, uh, she's like, send me some pics of your dick. And I'm like, well, I think you should start off since there's, there's less to see of me. So you got to work harder for it. Let me see some boobs. So she doesn't send me anything. Um, and when I was going out with her, that, that's that's what was weird. When we had sex, she would never show me her boobs. And I didn't know why. I later found out because she kind of had like these uh, E.T. fingers for nipples. These sausage link sags. Uh, she had really like salami. Like she had salamis, not pepperonis. So and uh, so, so I'm like, all right, well. You know, wh- whatever, I'll fucking put gravy on them if you want me, like if it makes you feel more comfortable. But so, so yeah, she would never show me. So then I'm like, just show me a fucking picture. And she wouldn't. So then she showed me, she, she just showed me a picture of herself. I'm like, fuck, man, I got to send a dick pic now. And I really don't want to do this. I don't want a d- dick pic of me online. And dude, oh my God, this girl was a huge fucking airhead. So I literally got a picture of, a, I'm like, you know what? I don't even have a boner right now be- because I haven't I haven't seen anything yet. Google images. Google images found a black cock and cuz she's such a fucking idiot I like edited it on my phone to look white. And as soon as I sent that fucking marathon 20 pics of everything. It was fucking great. But I yeah. So there's so there's my experience with sexting. Whatever you do, just look up black cocks, okay? <laughs> and have Photoshop installed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. God, that's great. Um. All right. Well, on that note, I think I'm gonna take off. What? The Blackhawks offended this racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, race, that racism shit's gotta stop. Uh, uh, that's like the pot. Are you talking the to me? Black. What's up? You talking to me about that? Oh, is that God. direct? Was that Most, direct? Mostly you. How do, how do I have a Chicago accent? Oh my God! I'm there not. he goes, John. Run. All right. How do we wrap this up? I don't know, man. So well, you, you guys can keep going if you want. I think maybe we will. Maybe we won't. But anyway, thank you everyone for listening. This has been. Hear nothing. See nothing. Ah, uh, you killed you got it, John. it, You got nice. it. Nice. That. I don't care what people say about you. You're pretty clever. <laughs>